Hey guys, welcome to Revolution's Hispanic Heritage Event brought to you by Wafi Media and presented by Celso Drinks. I am Rafael, aka the Latin Babbler. My guest today is a content creator who has almost 500k combined followers on TikToks and Instagram. And I would like to welcome to the show the nostalgic Latino himself, Carlos Castillo. What's up, man? Hey, this is where you cue like the the little applause sound effect. The blues, so. yeah, yeah. We don't have that. It's we're we're in a budget, so we. Can All get the... right. <laughs> so hey, go you... clap for me, I guess. Just in case, just in case. There you go. <laughs> don't worry, I'm used to it. I had high I mean, hopes. It, those are those are like Caucasian class though. That wasn't that wasn't like a Latino type clap. You know, <laughs> it was all moderated and all slow, like golf claps. Um, so, right? I see me who I see. Yeah, I gotta get loud about it. Yeah. I I got a question because you funny as hell. One of the reasons I asked for this interview is because I came across one of your reels. It's the one where you're sitting there in the back seat, and they're playing uh, Latino music, and they're sitting there trying to catch it, and it was shared everywhere. It that one shared. blew up. Yeah, but that one was ahead. like. Like everybody related to that shit. That shit was crazy. <laughs> that uh, it's funny because that it it was funny because that really opened up a discussion, uh, it, within the comments, and the comments are pretty toxic, and the ones that are angry are not people of color. Yeah, no, for sure, because they're sitting there like, man, we were just trying to make you feel better. Like, <laughs> and it's good, and it's and it's not, you know, the intentions are well. I'm just letting yeah. you know what happened to me personally. <laughs> like it. how you perceived it. it. <laughs> it's like it's not like, oh my god, how dare you? Um, <laughs> just just for people that are kind of confused right now, and they're like, what are they talking about? Um, uh, basically, it was a short skit. Of me in the back seat with uh with my white friend, you know, as a kid, um, I was friends with Mexicans. Uh, I was lucky if I found another Central American person, but it was yeah. usually, a, you know, I'm Salvadorian, um, you know, a Salvadorian friend, a Guatemalan friend, and then um, just out of just school. I mean, obviously, the school wasn't super. Diverse. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's the worst. <laughs> yeah, but 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 even so, you know, you would occasionally have a friend, you know, that's that's white, you know, yeah. and, and um, you know, you become friends with them. And, you know, when you're little kids, you're not really, at least in my opinion, you're not really looking at the color of another person because you have these classes, oh, of you course play dodgeball not. together or whatever. Yeah. You don't you don't um, it, it is um, like you don't you don't give a hoot of whatever is going on in and what's good you know it's, you're, you're basically judging them on how hard they can hit you with that big bouncy red ball you know yeah. or how fast can you run better than this kid um so yeah so as a context it was me uh my my white friend at the time this was like maybe 1998 97 so mm -hmm. i was just starting middle school or something and uh you're chilling in the back seat and we're you know probably going to mcdonald's or chuck e cheese or something because you know <laughs> we that that was a a privilege Those you know when you had like a white high friend class restaurants yeah it was a white friend it's not like you could go and go to chuck e cheese whenever you wanted or anything yeah. it's just like like oh yeah you know my 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 my, my white friend jason or or or, or <laughs> philip you know and it's like oh damn so let's take carlos with us like, well yeah so so and what's playing in the background is Bailamos. Yeah, Enrique Iglesias. Let the rhythm get to you over. <laughs> Bailamos. Te quiero. Uh, I forgot the rest of it. Mi querido. Bailamos. Well, mi whatever. Mi amor mio, man. You got to get it mi right. Mi amor mio. And I, had, and I had a... <laughs> yeah, so, so, uh, so basically, at that time, there was a huge Latin explosion of... It was Enrique Iglesias. Jennifer Lopez was blowing up with waiting oh, yeah. for tonight. Uh, Mark Anthony was uh, was like, I need to know. And, and then uh, Shakira, me. yeah, Shakira was <laughs> uh, Shakira accent. was just blowing up. Yeah, <laughs> whatever, whatever, and the burn to be together. Yes, yeah, so that's Shakira. 
Ricky Martin. Yeah. Ricky Martin. Ricky Martin was living with Luca. Living la vida yeah. loca. So it was <laughs> a had, huge. Some bangers, man. <laughs> yeah, dude. It was a huge Latin explosion at that time. And it, Enrique Iglesias comes up. And because he is trying to make it a little true to his roots and culturally uh, uh, aware, he, he puts some Spanish in there. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, the parents that are white, they're like, oh, man, this is this. I love this song. Let me go ahead and put this on. It's like, <laughs> yeah, Carlos, this one's for you. And, <laughs> and I'm like, like, OK. <laughs> it's like thanks <laughs> you know i'm like i'm not gonna hey i like the song i'm like but i was confused at the time I'm like uh why uh thanks uh and then and then they'll be like um Amor mio. Uh, you know the the spanish portion and they're like oh yeah. wow that's that's really catchy it's very foreign very awesome it's like what what are they saying and then they're like uh i think he's saying i love you i want you uh my love and and that was pretty much oh okay yeah so now i know the context of what he's actually saying <laughs> he's, and he's then you know and then they start singing with it you know <laughs> by la mose <laughs> let the rhythm get you over by la mose and then it's like all right cool you know i mean when you're that at that age it's like it doesn't you know it doesn't really translate in your head like uh like why would they fuck. dedicate this to me you know <laughs> you know and and it's funny because that that started a conversation you know with uh with the um w- with uh with the black community that ended up chiming in they're like oh yeah whenever biggie would come on they would end up you know bumping it for me for some yeah, reason right? <laughs> yeah and then, <laughs> You know, that's like, uh, you know, white people like were not right having now, that conversation, man. They were yeah, not exactly. That it's just, it's like, you know, just it, some probably some Korean kid and and has a white friend and they're going out of Chuck E. Cheese or wherever that they're going nowadays. They put some BTS on and it's like, yeah. this is for you. This is for you. You know, a, a <laughs> we June, selected I'm like, this soundtrack just for you. Yeah, I was like, why? Like, why? I'm like, you know, I was like, it's a banger. I like it. I'm not offended. But why would you refer this uh, uh, or, or, or associate me with this? Oh, yeah. I get it now. So it, it was it was a harmless, genuine, you know, we're just trying to be inclusive. And that's was what's really sweet about that. But a lot of people kind of took it the wrong way oh, as they, well. They went off. And they just made yeah. it about themselves. And they're like, no, this never happened to you. I mean, we, we're is- in that generation, though. We're, <laughs> we're in that generation that's like, they just can't take nothing. Everything is just got to have context and have some type of uh, yeah. plot behind it. Some type it's of just, sinister thing. <laughs> yeah, and and that's, yeah, I mean, it was all, it was it was done as a, as a, a gesture of, of good faith um type of deal and i just wanted to just share that moment and a lot of people happen to relate to it um you know regardless i mean you didn't even have to be latino or anything you know just like the other examples just if you were just a person of color um you've probably been in that situation where you're in the back seat and then just all of a sudden the volume goes up to 10 you know to to something you know that maybe you would feel a little bit more, more comfortable listening to um at that age but um yeah i'm glad but i'm glad it happened you know it's, it's <laughs> i got he's, free chuck e cheese that day yeah, <laughs> that's, that's crazy were you were you always this funny like growing up like was that was, I, what was your growing up story man like you, i know you're from i know you're here in la were you born and raised here yeah so i was born and raised here in la um uh, I think I was an accident, according to my parents. But it was a, <laughs> it's a happy accident, you know. But uh, yeah, and I grew up here in LA. Um, I always felt kind of like the outcast amongst all of my friends that I did hang out with, um, with you know, within the area, because all of my friends were Mexican. Um, that that I would always hang out with on the on the regular, you know. And yeah. um, and I would always tell myself, I'm like, oh man, like. I wish I was Mexican too, so I knew what they were referring to, and 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 uh, because they would be like, "Oh yeah, Aztec power and all of this stuff," and Aztec I'm like, power? Yeah, well, "Yeah," and I was like, "What do I have?" You know, do you have you ever seen that, bro? You're yeah, Salvador. You got pupusa power. 
Oh, I got pupusa <laughs> power, dude. Pupusa <laughs> power, and I have frijoles, queso, revueltas, y lo roco. And yeah. that's what I got for myself. And and uh, and it's just, you know, and, and, and it was always a thing, a thing growing up where because of the large Latino, Hispanic culture at the time, you know, people would just automatically associate you as being Mexican. As Mexican, yeah. Uh, as Mexican. So it didn't even really, re you know, regardless of as long as your skin color was a slight shade of brown, all of a sudden it's like you're a Mexican and then you're just kind of molded into that whole group there. And then I remember as a kid, I would get upset, like, I'm not Mexican. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> And and it's still like that to this day, where it's like if I mean, you call hey, Salvadorian Mexican, a Mexican, they get mad. Mexican, yeah, well, not just that. You call you call Mexican something else, they get mad too. Oh yeah, dude. But they get uh, mad we, as hell. Yeah, and and I think it's uh, yeah, it's 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 just that little speck of 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 color spectrum within the skin is just you know that could trigger somebody. It's like you have like a paint chart from that Sherwin Williams paint chart. <laughs> you know, that they that they have at the airports, you know, yeah, that identify it. terrorists and <laughs> and any people poor, uh, people of color, and they just go down the list. They just go like, down the hmm, list. Is it is it brown enough? Hmm. No. Okay. No. You know what? You're you're, you're good, Carlos. <laughs> you're good, Carlos. I'm like you're oh. not a, you're not on the threat list Whew. of that uh, yeah. of that flight. Do you have do you have uh, siblings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I, I was kind of going off on a tangent. Yeah, I have a sibling. I have an older brother. Um, and, uh, yeah, thankfully my parents, my parents have retired. They, uh, moved back to El Salvador and they're kind of living their best life, their best rancho life. Um, and, um, yeah, and I've stuck around and, and I've been able to, oh yeah. Um, I, I went to school. Yeah, I was born here, went to school, high school, graduated from Cal State Long Beach, um, in information systems, um, I'm utilizing that degree somewhat in my current job in corporate at this point. And I just happen to find um, the stuff that I'm doing right now as uh, more of like a passion and a, like a passionate hobby, if anything, just because I was always interested in film and I've always been interested in cinematography, photography, and I've liked creating and molding stories Um uh, you know, when I was much younger and when I was in school and whatnot. Um, and I tried to get into the YouTube thing and I was like, like, and subscribe every Tuesday, <laughs> new video. Every Tuesday, new video. <laughs> this was like 10 years ago, you know? And I remember how it was fun to be able to do all of that writing for all of these skits that I had, but it was so draining and it burned me out and I wasn't having fun anymore. And, um, and uh, so I gave that up. And luckily, there was, um, you know, Vine came around, which I, I tried, but I felt that it was too short to get the punchline across because you only had seven seconds. And um, I didn't make it there, but I tried. And then TikTok came around. And that gave me 15 seconds to give me my punchline across. And I was like, all right, cool. This will work. And my punchline got across, and people liked it. And I was like, "Yay!" And, <laughs> and we got, I got really excited, and and I was like, "All right, cool. They like this uh, me aggressively waking up to Time Life, uh, Ultimate Collections with Celine Dion, Michael Bolton, Luther Vandross, and all of them folks. Let me make another aggressive wake up." Uh, and and it just kept on snowballing from there, and 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 what on. Um, and then, um, as that, as I started gaining a following for that, I think I ended up, uh, changing or, or changing my name to the nostalgic Latino, um, because I felt like there was a lot of nostalgia accounts and there's, and there are, and they're really good. Uh, but the difference is that I always wanted to be able to spread the culture, uh, the Latino Hispanic culture, um, to be able to differentiate myself and to show other folks that, you know, there are nostalgic things within our culture that are pretty freaking hilarious. And um, and I like to be able to touch that because I think that that's what makes me special or at least stand out, you know, from the rest of the uh, nostalgia crew, if whatnot. And uh, 
And it just so happens that a few of them have managed to, you know, make a dent in the right direction. Uh, just like the Enrique Iglesias one. I think that's a perfect encapsulation of Latino nostalgia. And if I'm able to hit that mark, then I think that's the perfect uh, type of content that I would love to create like all the time. So I did notice that about about the content because a lot of Latino creators out there are doing everything that's like very stereotypical. So they're using a lot of like family type items, you know, like we interviewed um, uh, Bossy and we interviewed Jay Torres. And a lot of them are using, you know, things that have happened in their family situation, family members, you know, things of that nature. The, the nostalgia, like some of the videos that you do, I can completely relate to. So for instance, like the ones of you downloading music on LimeWire in the 90s. And it like you, you get all excited because, you know, for people who didn't know, we didn't have fast connections. So when you downloaded a song on LimeWire, it took forever to get that song. And then when you finally get the song, it was all messed up or was some type of read it or, or even worse. It wasn't even the song. It was something that was named the song. <laughs> yeah. You got something else, like some type of porn sound or something like it was, and you would try to play it and it was like, ah, and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> So, like, <laughs> like, is some of the is this like some of the stuff that you experienced on your own when you were doing? Yeah, when you decided it, it, to do this content. It was it's funny because it's it's true and it's like um uh those particular experiences. It, it's like I want to try to make it relatable to as many people as possible within that millennial range and whatnot and. um well, the 90s yeah, would hit that. Yeah, the 90s 90, is the perfect time for that. The 90s and the 2000s are usually my jam. So yeah. um, so when it comes to that, yeah, yeah, and that's how it was. It would take at least about between 45 minutes 40. to about an hour for you to download <laughs> a full song. Yeah. Unless, you, unless you were like at some awesome computer lab or – some internet cafe that had these super fast connections and like the hotel room or something like, <laughs> yeah, they'll be able to download them in like three minutes. And, um, yeah, but we didn't have that, that kind of privilege. We're all on AOL, Netscape. <laughs> we had yeah. prodigy CompuServe. We had all these type of dialogue that got so. interrupted when a phone call came in. Yeah. When a phone call came in or if <laughs> mom restarted, up the Ma! <laughs> had to restart. No the shit, el teléfono. <laughs> <laughs> and then my mom then gets mad at me. Siempre estás en el teléfono. You're always on the phone. It's like I'm not on the phone. I'm downloading music, man. Yeah, and, I'm not downloading. And, yeah, in, and, like... and, in, and in one hour, I'm going to have a song. <laughs> yeah, and then you download that song. And then let's say I downloaded... Uh, um, oh, we'll yeah. Bailamos. It, there you go. <laughs> no, right now, I actually uploaded one today. Um it was it's uh Miss Jackson, right? From Outcast. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. <laughs> I am for real, right? So but instead I ended up getting boom. Lo siento me Jackson. Yo soy por vida. No quería ser tu you know, and then version. it's like yeah, I'm like, what the hell? Why is this in Spanish? And why does it sound like not outcast? Yeah, right. Man. <laughs> I mean, it, sound like it would have been, been cool as shit if he did it in, in Spanish. Yeah, though. or it's all like garbled, or you're all of a sudden you're like, you know, I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. <laughs> and then it goes, no, like, DJ, 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 lethal, lethal. Yeah. Exclusive. In between, you in between mix, the thing. You mix, and you're like, in between. What the ruining hell? Ruining the fucking song, dude. Yeah, you're just ruining man. the song. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Please <laughs> come and visit me at www.gobill.com. And you're like, Go what Bill. the hell? And it was, it was just always like rent. that. It was crazy, though. Yeah. I mean, you have just... a lot of content that you can go through because the 90s were just filled. Oh, yeah. Moments. It's just that's that's where I kind of have to. <laughs> I have to individualize myself and compartmentalize myself that I'm not like every other nostalgic creator. Yeah, and I have to be very specific with those particular moments, and uh, yeah, and sometimes they hit, sometimes they don't. But I'm having fun doing them, and that's really what's important. Did you ever have a situation where you created one that you thought was just banging, like you turn around, 
<laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> you were on your phone. You had written this shit up. And it was like, bro, this shit is going to hit. Everybody's going to relate to that thing. You put it up and like, it's not getting nothing. Like there are people, you, you might as well just have like posted it with no hashtags at like three o'clock in the morning. Cause it was just, so have you ever had that one where you were it like, and how did you feel about it? Because be that honest That happens with it. a lot. That happens a lot more often than not. You know, I'll go full on production mode. You know, I have my ring light on and I'll have the lighting going. I'll make sure to put the wig on, you know, so I'm portraying <laughs> my mom. You know, I'm making sure that I'm changing wardrobe. And so I'm getting my point across. I'm using different angles in order for me to make it look a little bit more cinematic and make the punchline a lot, you know, funnier. And I'm like, all right, cool. This one is it. This one's a banger. I really put a lot of effort into this one. You know, 100 likes. And then all of a sudden, right? and then I end up going to Halloween Spirit, and I just take a video of some clown animatronic that's just playing with himself, and that ends up getting 460,000 likes out of nowhere. And I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, like... What is it that your fans are into? You start questioning. Yeah, this shit. dude, it's just it's just it's weird stuff. It's like, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like the fans that do that do follow or or just the followers in general, they know what to expect of me. Yeah. And uh, and on occasion, I'll post some relatable content, just random, you know, some random stuff that is just that's just out there. And it's, as long as it's relatable, then it's fine. Um, but yeah, I I could just have a video that's only six seven seconds long and that blows up, and then I have a you know, well-produced 45 second one and it just completely flops and it does suck. It, it feels really crappy. And you're like, damn, man, why didn't this, <laughs> it's like, damn, why didn't this hit man? It's our question. You know? And then, and then, and then it's like, all they're going to remember me for is the guy that was looking at the clown that was playing with himself <laughs> rather than the guy that was at the bus stop listening to, I'm sorry, Senora Jackson. So, <laughs> <laughs> it happens but That's you great. know that happens to everybody unless you already have an established following like um like i mean like you're just talking about basi basi he has it's I like five, like yeah, it's five, five mil million or something yeah he's got yeah, five, he mil has like on five mil he just barely followed me back the other day and i was surprised i was like because i've been following him since the beginning you know he's a lot younger than i am and um but his content is relatable, especially a lot to the Hispanic community. He's yeah. awesome at it. And um, I, I did a, a, uh, a video of me at the swap meet. And you hear all of these sounds that you would hear at the swap meet when you're a kid. Um, and, and I had these poppers, you know, the little poppers that you would go, pa. you know, yeah. there was the small little balls. And go, no, I remember that. I remember them. Yeah. And, you know, you'd be chilling at the swap meet with your mom because your mom ended up making you go like at six in the morning. That way she could find parking and beat all the crowds. <laughs> and uh, and you just just walking there. You have no money to buy. So you're just chilling and you're just have you're eating a churrito or an elote or some chicharrones or something. And you're just bah, and you bought and you were using those because those only cost a dollar. Your mom wouldn't give you grief about it. And um, and he saw that when. And he ended up recreating, he did his own twist on it, on his own version, and he credited me. Um, and he actually followed me back. I was like, oh, shit. Wow, dude. I finally, it's like, uh, this is awesome. And then like I sent him a validation? message. I'm like, yeah, it gave me a little bit of validation, you know. Because, um, I mean, I'm not looking at, at other creators just kind of based on their age or anything like that. It's just yeah. more or less about the quality of their content and just, you know, if they make me laugh, you know, they make me laugh and I love it. So, so when he, you know, somebody that is in, as influential as him to the Hispanic community um, to kind of follow me back. And then, you know, and, and I message them straight up and I, you know, media, I'm like, Hey, Bussy, you know what? I appreciate you. Uh, follow me. I just, you know, I've been watching your stuff for a while. I hope you're doing well. Keep it, keep it up. You're awesome. And yeah, and you messaged me back. I was like, "Hey, dude, up. You know, uh, thank you. I've been watching your stuff too. Thank you, and you're awesome too." And then just it is what it is. We're not like amigos, carnales, or anything, whatever. No, but it was a like, but at least... it was straight an acknowledgement of yeah. like, okay, cool, homie saw me, finally. <laughs> and uh, I mean, he's and, that, and I'm bro. thankful for that. When we had when we had the interview, it's actually one of the clips that's on our Todo Wafi account. Um, we were sitting there talking about, you know, me doing content creation. Like I was doing it for a little bit before we started doing the uh, thirty days of of Hispanic heritage, 
Mm-hmm. And I had mentioned, I was like, it's really hard because like every idea that I have, like you guys are already like on top of it. It's almost impossible to, to catch up. Cause I mean, it's what they do for a living. Mm-hmm. So we had, I had mentioned to him that one of my favorite uh, reels that he had done was the one where his father is slapping the watermelon and it's like a really funny, it's oh, a really funny okay. yeah. So we got into a discussion about, you know, my mom, like, you know, eat, or my grandmother, I think it was eating the grapes uh, at the supermarket and how they can eat like a ton of them. I kid you mm-hmm. not, he made it into a reel. That shit almost got a million views. <laughs> I'm like, damn it, I should have been faster. But I'm like, I'm honored though, because it was like, it came out shortly after that. It was like really good. He took the yeah. guy. He was like, you got to share some of the ones that you have. I'm like, I'm not sharing shit. Like, I want to keep these to myself. You already got the grape one out of me. <laughs> no, yeah. There was one. I, it was funny because there was one that I did uh, that blew up, too, where, you know, you would go to a, a market and and it was like a first person point of view. So I had my camera just kind of going like this, like if I'm walking. Yeah. And I go straight to the frijoles, to the beans. And then you just see my hand go. <laughs> it just goes straight into the bean and just massage. And then I grab the scooper and I just start covering it up really quick. It, yeah, dig and it then in. I'm like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and then that resonated with so many people. And I was like, oh, wow, that's something that simple. Um, it was able, you know, it made people laugh. And that was really cool, too. Have you figured out the science to it? Like, like posting and, you know, the times. I know a lot of creators, they have to come up with. <sighs> you know, what they figure is, is when the audience is there's for people who don't know content creation, isn't you just put up some uh, videos, uh, Mm -hmm. whenever. And like, there's a certain time depending on where your audience is, you know, what, what times they are online. There's a bunch of analytics that go along with that. Have you, have you at least come close to figuring out when those a little bit like, um, for my demographic, what I typically do is i know that i'm in la so i picture it as the people that would probably be watching my stuff are either going to be watching it on their lunch break or they're going to be watching it right after they get out of work so i always like you you're not a morning Mm, guy no i don't think so no hell no i wouldn't even wake up in the morning early enough for me (laughs) to even work on when Mm -mm. i mean there's people going to work i'll sleep in but, uh, yeah, there's people to go to work, but, I mean, I don't think that they're going to be looking at that first thing in the morning. Uh, maybe. Yeah. You're right, but that, that's true. But I usually try to to pace it so that way it's kind of lines up with that. So I usually, like here on my time, I try to post it either between 3 p.m. Um, here or I post it at 6 p.m. Because uh, at that point, and I feel that that's the sweet spot, because 3 p.m., uh, a lot of parents are picking up their kids at that time. Yeah. Um, and and sometimes the kids and the teens are also watching your stuff too, and that's when they get out. Three hours on the East Coast, people are getting out of work as well. So that's six o'clock. So they're, that's they're so that's six so you... o'clock. That that part. Uh, yeah. yeah. Or you can post it at six p.m. Um, local time, and it ends up over there at nine p.m. that time. And 9 so p.m. at that to, time, they're cooling down. It, yeah, they're cooling them. down, and they're probably just going to be chilling in bed, and they're looking at their phone. Yeah, because it's already past dinner. That makes sense. Uh, um, and yeah, so and and I think that's probably the sweet spot. If you have a lot of followers, then it doesn't really matter anymore. You just at that point, you've already amassed enough of a enough of a ratio of that demographic that regardless of whatever time that you're going to post they're going to push it's going to be it's going to be a hit yeah. i think it's always going to be a hit but maybe if i post it like at three in the morning and i have you know a million followers or th- three million followers or two or whatever it's probably going to get ten thousand likes or whatever it hits that yeah. it hits the 10k mark but if i maybe post it at a time that i maybe suggested It'll probably get more, maybe forty, yeah. fifty thousand likes or something. It so depends. it'll have enough push because of the, the amount of followers, but not not sufficient enough to carry yeah, yeah, the entire yeah. so, the entire team. That, so, yeah, so and speak. then you know, there's it's like it's like what you said. So, you know, some of these that that's literally their job now. Like they're doing it full time. Yeah. So they're posting video per video. Um, you know, yeah, sometimes like these guys more are than doing... two, three times a day. 
Bossy and them, they're, I mean, they're doing brand deals. They're, they're all over the Oh, world. yeah, they're dude. They, they, they already have a click going. They have their own little community group that's made up of, I think, seven, uh, seven creators. Oh, yeah, Compa. Seven or eight, yeah, Compa. Yeah. There you go. And, yeah, and what's great is that they have a system where they're able to rely on each other for content. And that and that's I don't think there's a way for that to fail and that in that um in that case. And I'm really happy that he managed to get that going. And I think he's even doing like a tour or something. Yeah, so. they're doing a tour. Damn, <laughs> so he's doing a tour. He's gonna got, have he's gonna need like a bando or something. Yeah, they they got <laughs> they're doing a tour. Bossy, if you're watching this, I don't know if you're watching this, but it's you gotta not, have like it's a not. Banda you gotta or talk something. to you gotta talk to his manager, it's Gilberto Sosa. Oh so, my uh, god. Yeah. Sosa, Sosa is the the Sosa is part of the Sosa projects uh, oh, that they have yeah. over there. So it's it's I mean it's a good it's a really good idea to have kind of like a, co- a content creator mm-hmm. tour. Do you ever do you ever find yourself where you you have like creators block like that hell day? yeah. There's times that I think I one thing I've learned is be, and this is just me um, and that's just because I don't I don't have this I don't see this potentially being like a full time gig. Um, and I'm okay with that because, because I don't have that time to be able to dedicate that much, especially at where I'm at. And I'm not, I'm trying to be humble about it for the most part, because on TikTok, I'm at 340k, I think. Yeah. 340k. You're about a 120, what is it? No more. And then I'm at one thirty-eight. I think is what it is. 138 or one. Yeah. Somewhere on, on IG. Um, but I just can't, I can't see myself doing it. Like I just, I would, I, the, my, my biggest concern is just like I did with the YouTube thing is that I'll burn myself out and I'm just not going to enjoy it. Like if, as soon as something starts feeling like a chore or like a job, then I don't really feel it anymore. And that was my issue when I tried to do YouTube a long time ago. Um, and I like being able to post the stuff, you know, whenever I feel like it essentially. And if there's times when I have, you know, writer's block or creator's block or whatnot i just don't post anything and i just try not to overthink yeah yeah because before i used to overthink a lot because i was very concentrated on oh i need to get these followers i need to keep the the ball moving and i need all of this stuff and um yeah and and that's a struggle that you have to kind of deal with mentally because um because sometimes it could get to you and you're like oh my god if i don't post anything and in a day, then I'm going to lose followers and they're going to lose interest in me and all of this stuff. And you just have to kind of keep the mindset of those people that like you will continue to like you. And, um, and you just kind of go with it at that point. Uh, you know, every once in a while, I'll get like a comment that'll be like, dude, you deserve more likes, dude, this, you know, this deserves to go viral and all of this stuff. I'm like, dude, I, you know, it would be great if it did. However, I'm glad that you guys still found it funny and it wasn't, you know, like it may be, it may have flopped, but as long as some of you guys found it funny, I mean, that's good enough for me. That's the, you know, but ideally if I, if I wanted to make this a full-time thing, I, I guess it would be nice, but it would have to be like, you know, I'm much older, dude. I'm not, I'm not like team compa where I could, you know, <laughs> bunch of 20 year olds and stuff yeah you know they got their whole life in front of they don't got to get married they don't got to have any kids or anything or yeah worry about all of these you know paying the car insurance and all that they're they're in their prime and like and and i'm all for it but you know me i'm older i'm already in my in my uh, late 30s so so at that point i'm like you know i i just i i learn to kind of regulate myself a little bit and um and i just don't want to oversaturate the uh my no my, it makes uh, sense my socials with too much of me because i think a part of me in the back of my head is like man i really hope that people don't get annoyed of, of me of just seeing me all the time on their instagram well i mean feed or look that's the... not i mean that's what that's what has you the followers that you have so i mean at one point or another they're they're actually i mean one of the reasons they follow you and i and i've noticed that about just anything so we have like a bunch of accounts <clears throat> that are a part of a network and I've noticed that they follow them for specific reasons. So you wouldn't have the followers that you didn't have is because they weren't, you know, if they weren't going after the content that they were specifically looking for when they followed you to begin with, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm, and I'm happy and I'm blessed that people are, 
are willing to, you know, to, to laugh. I'm super blessed whenever somebody uh, sends a message to me and they'll say, hey, look, dude, you're hilarious. Um, I'm, I, it's really nice when I get a message with like, uh, you know what, uh, I, I'm, I'm like sad quite often. However, whenever I see your videos, they always cheer me up and all of that stuff. And that's those are the really important messages in that case, um, because everybody's always, you know, hey, dude, this is great. And they'll share reels with me, share memories and whatnot and and i'm always thankful that they take the time to send a kind message um and i always do my best to respond to every single message provided that it's not a weird message from a weirdo because <laughs> i, I get plenty of those too yeah i get those you know and um and uh yeah like, that's hi, my thing. name is it's, jane yeah it's just yeah, yeah exactly and and uh as long and and it's really cool because you know a lot of those people that that I will reply to, they'll be like, "Oh my god, I can't you believe you back. replied." Yeah, I can't believe you replied Holy back. Holy shit! And then I'm like, well, "Hey man, <coughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm a normal guy on the other side, just it's like you because, are." It's because on the other, on the other end, like I'm pretty sure they're trying to reach out to some of the content creators, but some of those content creators they have managers and so forth, and so they only mm-hmm. reply based on, like they have their accounts set up. Yeah. To 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 block out a lot of the items because they're so insaturated by responses. Oh, yeah. There's no way for them to, to be able to get to them. I mean, I'm surprised that you're able to, you know, respond to a lot of the ones that you do considering the fact that you probably have a lot of, a lot of uh, responses on your, on your posts. Yeah. I mean, I, I do. I mean, I, I can't reply to every single comment on my videos, yeah. but I can reply to, practically almost every message that's sent out to me um i'm i'm a i'm a i kind of have like an ocd for that um so like <laughs> if i have so if i see like a little number one or a number two yeah on you the gotta, side you of gotta the message, i'm like oh my god what is it i need to handle this out i gotta figure quick. it out <laughs> it's the same thing with my emails um and it's like it's like i can't have a little number right next so i need to make sure it's red it's, it's taken care it's of empty. and it's deleted it's and done. i gotta make sure i unsubscribe from that one fashion place where I told them that I didn't want to sign up in the first place. So, <laughs> you know? Right. So I have a question. So. Cause I know we're, you know, we're, we're coming to the, to, to the end leg of the Hispanic heritage month. Okay. Uh, you being Salvadoreño, like what does it meant for you to be, you know, representing, especially with, with the following that you have, what is it like for you to be representing your country like that? It's fantastic. I, I love it. Um, I think one thing that I really enjoy about being Salvadorian within this social circle uh, of media is that I'm I'm part of a few of a bigger kind of a pond, so to speak. And yeah. I feel that that makes me unique um, and it makes me a lot more, uh, I guess, more real so to speak. Yeah. Uh, because I'm not like every other Latino creator that would just be, you know, whether they're Mexican or Mexican American or Guatemalan or whatever, or, or, you know, there, like there's a lot of Latino creators from others, from other uh, parts of the world that you just never really hear about. And so when you see somebody from like, Belize or some or even you know Dominican Republic or whatever I mean obviously Puerto Rico is all bad bunny so yeah obviously he already <laughs> has that down anytime we want to increase engagement on the account we just post bad bunny content yeah like, so <laughs> so so I, you know to have like my little speck of this big old tapestry of Latino creators and Hispanic heritage it's uh it means a lot because I'm I'm part of a bigger picture yeah. And um and I would hope that I stick out like a sore thumb for the right reasons. And um and that's what makes me really proud about being a Salvadorian. Um, because I hope to stick out uh like a sore thumb for the right reasons. <laughs> I don't know if you want to end it with that line. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't he's know like, if anything like... He's like, I hope I could stick out like a sore thumb. For all yeah, the well, reasons. I mean, it's like I'm, I'm like uh, the pimple on your butt that you always scratch, <laughs> and you can't reach it, but you know it's there because you feel yeah. it. Yeah, you feel it. Yeah, it's... no, no, but on the real, yeah, it's just yeah, it's it's we're all a beautiful tapestry of multicultural colors, 
and and I feel that I am a very bright speck on that on that tapestry. Very and I cool. Hope to 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 not only be a bright speck, but I'm hoping that that speck is capable of expanding um, with other creators that are willing to represent themselves um, and their countries as well. You know, as you know, as 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 just normal great people that are funny that have artistic talent that are funny that know how to play a certain instrument that are really good at art you know somebody that's able to do whatever they want essentially yeah and they're able to provide anything that spreads along the culture then i'm all for it and i'm hoping that i'm able to spread the culture and in that aspect as well and I'm, well, you're and I'm doing amazing that. man because like a, a lot of the stuff it's it's kind of cool because people don't get um, at least I see that some people don't get that the way you're doing a twist on it from a, like a Latino's point of view on some of these. And some of them aren't, some of them are just general, general content. That's pretty mm-hmm. much relatable to anybody. You don't have to be Latino. You don't have to be white. You don't yeah. have to be black. Like the circumstance is a circumstance, regardless of where, you know, where you are and, and, and you know, what, what you're doing at that moment. So amazing answer. I, I really love that. Um, there are a lot of more, uh, you know, Salvadoranos that are now starting to, uh, get on some of yeah. these platforms, so it's you know it's really cool to to see at least those voices magnified through exactly. these process where we wouldn't have had that you know uh, before because of the limitations. Yeah, yeah, and and you know obviously our our communities aren't are necessarily um, not to say that they're not important or anything, but obviously they they don't saturate just like um, just like any other like any other uh types of folks or anything like that so yeah. it's just really good it's just really good to be able to kind of have our our hand in it um just by a little bit you know it's, it's and as they and the songs people are able to see uh that we're kind of reaching out then i'm then i think that we've did a pretty good impact in that case cool all right i gotta uh, we're gonna do fast questions Ooh, it's like we'll a see. lightning round. Yeah, like a lightning round. I'll ask you as many questions lightning. as we possibly can, and, and you answer them and give us your best answer for it. You ready? Okay, lightning round is now beginning with the Latin Babbler. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going to have to create a whole ass intro for that. <laughs> oh, bro, are you going to cut this out? Why do I even waste my time? Man, All right, a... is, is a hot dog a sandwich? It is a sandwich. It is, it a, is sandwich. a sandwich. It's delicious. Costco still has it at a dollar fifty. Oh, don't, those are don't... amazing. The long that, ones. That is that is proof that that some things are still good in this world. Yeah, the hot dog sandwich. I have one dollar fifty at Costco, baby. <laughs> Let's go. What would be the worst buy one get one free sale of all time? Uh, oh my gosh, that's hard. I uh. <laughs> I knew I was gonna stumble you on that one. It's question that number hard, two. Dude. That's hard. <laughs> buy one get one free. What's the worst one? Uh, two. It would be, uh, uh, buy one taco the the the, the lengua and you get a second one for free. That be I hate lengua tacos. You hate lengua tacos. Oh man, uh, you want food? Oh, that's crazy. All right, what is your what is your favorite smell? Um, can, can I share two of them? Yeah, good. Uh. A uh, Cinnabon. Oh, that's actually good. Yeah. Okay. And my nostalgic smell is uh, the smell of the fountain at a mall. <laughs> I'm not going to ask. What the hell? What's wrong? Why are you even left? It's a, it's a nice smell. It's just it's it's just... like... Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Okay, not a water fountain. You're talking about, like, the fountain in the center nah, of the mall. Nah, man, I'm not talking about, like, you, you reach in and you drink <laughs> water out of a water fountain, dude. Come on. I'm I talking was... about a water fountain where you throw in the coins, dude. Okay, okay, okay. That makes sense. I Get was the thinking, pasta. I was dude, thinking water loco. fountain. I was like, bro, that's crazy. That's some Puchica nasty shit. Vos. Get the pasta. <laughs> All right, are you a texter or a caller? Oh, I'm a texter ASAP. And I've been texting since AOL 3.0, baby. Damn. Chat rooms. Holla at Damn. your boy. People don't, people don't know that. People don't know that. They, oh, they have yeah. absolutely no idea yeah. what you're talking about. They're, All they're, right. They're, they have to go and look at the Smithsonian to find out what the hell we're talking about. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? At the Smithsonian, they have the uh, 
the Apple computer, the transparent ones, the yeah. ones with the really cool colors. I remember that shit. The, yeah, uh, that, the IMAX. The, 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 yeah, that the IMAX. Those are those are part of the Smithsonian, actually. <laughs> <laughs> those are cool as hell, man. <laughs> They're cool. Anything People don't know. Back in the day yeah, was dope. You could see what you weren't able to upgrade. Yeah, exactly. If I knew <laughs> that she had that neon green beeper back in the day. Oh, like people don't. People don't. Man, we are just giving away our age in this one. Ah, so, dude. all right, hey, are man. You, are that's, you that's scared what I, that's about what I flying on. on a plane? Sometimes, and the Sometimes? only reason I'm scared of flying in a plane is because I'm afraid I won't fit in the seat. <laughs> oh my god. Mia's La Bamba. <laughs> oh, that is really bad. Yeah, that's it. See, I think everybody has a cultural, um, spiritual connection to that movie. I could be anywhere in any place. You just put on Sleepwalk. Yeah. <laughs> and then right at the very end, somebody, somebody's around somebody. you is going to be like, what are they going to yell? <laughs> what are they going to yell, Rafa? Wait, which one? I mean, Richie Valens or what? Are... <laughs> I don't know what they're going to do. Richie! Oh, okay, I was going to say. <laughs> Come on, right. bro. What's I'm, wrong with you? I grew up on the East Coast. Richie Valens was not our hero. Like, <laughs> You don't have to go grow East L.A. Nah, we got Tito Puente over there. Like, that's, that's what we were turning around and, like, celebrating on that side. Celia Cruz, all those New Yorkers, man. Damn, man. La vida es un carnaval. There you go. See? I mean, it, you know, it has you don't you don't get the it. urge to yell Richie at the end of Sleepwalk. <clears throat> no, I don't. But the movie itself made me sad as shit. So I mean, oh, I, 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 I'll, I'll take that one though. Maybe you know. maybe it is like a West Coast thing. What the? Heck? It's a West Coast hey, thing, you, man. You you've opened up my mind here a little bit, and I'm actually quite concerned and disturbed at the same time. <laughs> it's both. Yeah, I think. And I disappointed. Think... And disappointed because they nobody else yelling Richie from the East Coast. We're just not. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> but you guys can take that one. All right, so pineapple on a pizza, yes or no? Uh, I have a very, very, very strong hell no. Hell no <laughs> to the no, no, no. Hell to the no. Yeah, that's yeah, just disgusting. Yeah, we're but, not going to put pineapple on Because, I mean, pizza. I don't know why they put pineapple on pizza. I, I don't think it personally belongs there. I don't know how it meshes well with the marinara sauce that's there and the fact that it's, you know, being coupled up with ham. Yeah, like a sweet just... and sour type thing is what they, they kind of, I just. <laughs> you know. It's just yeah, really exactly. bad. Yeah. All right, so if you had a superpower, what would it be? Probably invisibility. Don't ask. Don't ask. Okay, so we won't. That's fine. He just wants to be, inv- <laughs> he just wants to be invisible. I just want to be invisible. Keep it that way. It's I'm okay. kidding. I already you am know? invisible. <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> nah. <laughs> Why you laugh, dude? What's wrong? With because you? you sound like You're... you sound like one of those six year old kids. I already <laughs> am invisible. Like, yeah. like, like yeah, in the world's bro, ignoring you. Got, me, bro. Motherfucker's got almost 500k followers. He's talking about I'm already am invisible. Yeah, uh, he, that, you're the least invisible guy in this conversation uh, right now. Damn, Fig- figuratively <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I wasn't even going there. and literally followers. <laughs> How dare you, sir? <laughs> now I become uh, offensive in this conversation. Oh, uh, no, nah, you know what? Uh, probably, um, I would actually like. To, yeah, even though I'm thinking about how scared I am of heights, um, I I wouldn't want to fly. Maybe have the ability to be able to like teleport wherever I want. That would be cool. That you're the first so person who like, answered that. Yeah, I would like want movie, like Jumper. teleportation. Yeah, just yeah. Be able to, like, yeah, bounce somewhere, like go to Hell Greece. Hell yeah, just be there in a matter of seconds. Yeah, you, yeah. can't kidnap me. I could. No Amber. It's a lot faster me, than flying, so I would definitely. Hell do yeah, that. man. All right, so iced coffee or hot coffee? Iced coffee. Iced coffee, all right. So we're, iced we're... coffee just because I, I just really like cold items. Yeah, um, same. I if can't I'm have drinking water anything, warm. If I'm drinking anything hot, it's usually hot chocolate. Yeah, that's the only one. So we're we're the good on one. that. There we go. Or even Favorite Trump musician. Island, too. Um, oh, geez, there's so many. Yeah, but you got to have one. Michael Jackson. Michael? That's a good pick. MJ. MJ is probably defining a lot of my childhood in the nineties. And all uh, right, what is your all time celebrity crush? You know what? Away. What's really cool? No, nah, no, nah, I'll give it away. Um I, I I mean she's still a celebrity in my heart. But the Pink Ranger, uh Amy Joe Johnson. 
I Why you laugh, dude? You've been clowning me this entire podcast, <laughs> homie. I wasn't expecting a Power Ranger. <laughs> Bro. Okay, so check this out. So Comic-Con LA is happening in uh, December. I got my, uh, I ordered my photo opportunity to uh, meet her for the first time. Wait, when is Comic-Con? Uh, it's in December. Here in LA, at least. Yeah, but when? Like, what day? On a Saturday? Uh, Man, December 8th why you gotta or something? Be so complicated. There you go. December 8th. <laughs> Bro, it's not like I have these dates in my mind, man. I, mean, I said, you, I, I bro, said you teleportation, got a gonna... not telepathy. Yeah, but that's not telepathy. You have a tickets to this thing, don't you? Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> my bro, got tickets. you are. I'm a, I'm and you know what's the, worst, what's the worst part of this, dude? <laughs> Is that you're not going to edit any portion of you clowning no, on me on all. this podcast. Gee, all, on this bro. interview. Yeah. Oh it's, my God, those. It's okay though. Anyways, I mean, you know. Yeah, we'll... she she's my she's my crush right now. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a big Selma Hayek guy. So. Oh man. So the the problem with me is like I like I said in the uh, the uh, STEM tech panel that I was just in er, earlier, is I would never be able to like interview her <laughs> without getting all like weirded out. <laughs> Is that what you call it nowadays, Rafael? Just call it weirded out? I think I it's called be, something else, bro. I would be in the in the interview like this. And she would be like, are you okay? And I'm like, I, um, yeah, welcome I, to um, the show. I, uh, I appreciate you coming. Um, do you want anything? <laughs> like, <laughs> she should be like, well, I appreciate you coming. Like, yeah, she'll be responding back. She's like, she's going to like console me. She's going to be like, no, 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 Rafael, uh, it's okay. And so I'm like, you shouldn't have done that. You touched yeah, me. Dude. I'm done. I'm I'm over. So and the it's like, yeah. comes out of nowhere. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, my God. You know, uh, that would be funny, though. I mean, he's probably the only Latino representation we had. And he was from Spain. Yeah, dude. Um, damn. Sama Hayek. Uh, first time I saw her was uh, from Dust Till Dawn. Yeah. That was the first time I saw her. She was El, uh, uh, Desperado for me. Oh that yeah, was that a... was uh, that was her first. That was her first. I think it's their big starring role. And then she ended up having to do that dumb movie called Fools Rush In with Matthew Perry. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, but hey, you know she's got a star now. So oh yeah, she does. She finally got that star. Twenty hmm. years later, well, you know, we couldn't wait long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Uh yeah, but that's right. a good choice. That's a good choice. Salma Hayek is really oh, good. I'm sticking I'm sticking by it. I mean, she's gonna listen to all of my interviews on this media company and she is going to decline every single one of my interviews because oh, of the well. fact that she knows hey, yeah, sabe. Yeah, sabe. 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 Yeah, sabe. So the manager gonna be like, Did you and I'm like, Yeah, yeah. Quite a few interviews we've mentioned her. So all right. So if people wanted to find you and follow you and look at your content, where would they go? They can uh, follow me either on TikTok at the Nostalgic Latino or Instagram at the Nostalgic, the nostalgic Latino. Latino. <laughs> yeah, I made it easy for everybody. Yeah. See, he follows, <laughs> he's like me. I, I I just go the Latin babbler. Everywhere. Yeah, it's a it, you try to, your best to try to keep it symmetrical so that way it's not like. It's sometimes not easy. They turn around and yeah, because like some yeah, some, and... somebody will take the account just to hold it hostage because they thought of an idea five years ago yeah. and never used it. Exactly, I'm like the Latin babbler. <laughs> yeah, I can't right? wait to take this one. <laughs> not <laughs> what me. What an idiot! Whoever tries <laughs> to take this from me. I mean, this is the one that was available, so I'm good with it. I'm good with it. Yeah, that's cool, man. It's yo, good. man. It's it was good. a. This was a really good conversation. I really enjoyed uh, having this com- uh, this discussion with you, man. Uh, uh, but why does it have to end? Because we have a one hour time frame for this shit. If not, it's gonna take me five years. You're forever. editing this podcast. The, the, I would. I'm saying podcast most of the time, but that's because you're, I, it's the Latin Babbler show. So we. Oh we my normally... god, it's the Latin Babbler show. Of, of... And um, and then by the time that you edit the thing, it's only gonna say like the whole interview is like forty eight minutes. Forty eight minutes. Forty two yeah. minutes. I'm like, come on, bro, where's the full hour? I I, hey, I, I got five minutes. Quality. I got five minutes to try to do an outro and and the 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 music. So you got to give me that. Uh, are you know. gonna put any like really cool music like as an outro? Yeah, like, I mean the Latin babbler. Like even even a. Oh wait, we, have, we have our own, we have our own theme song that was given to us by uh, Ricardo Campos from uh, Costa Rica. ¿Qué? Yeah, you didn't you didn't know because you didn't do any research on us before you came into this interview. 
Nah, because I was held hostage to do this. Yeah, you were. And we tried so many times to do this. <laughs> we must have tried like six times to get this interview going. So, Oh, jeez. I mean, we uh, finally got it. So, yeah, Guys, if you're watching this interview, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel or Facebook, wherever you're watching it. If you're listening to it on all your podcast channels, make sure to subscribe. There, we are literally everywhere. Go to www.todowafi.com. Follow us on all social media platforms at Todo Wafi. And be sure to follow this amazing gentleman right here, the nostalgic Latino. I am Rafael. That is Carlos. And we are out. Desde Nicaragua hasta Costa Rica. Con esta canción todo el mundo se identifica. Llamen a los chilenos y a los cubanos. Llamen a Puerto Rico y a los mexicanos. Que ya se armó la rumba. Desde Panamá hasta Ecuador. Vámonos a Perú. Estando en mi país o estando allá afuera, porque para mí mira noches en fronteras, yo levantaré mi bandera.